This is Lesson 3 in our Calculus 1 series, An Introduction to Limits. I'd like to start this lesson by describing some of the notation that you're going to see with limits. Here we have the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is equal to l. This is saying that as the x values approach a from values that are less than a, the f of x values, or y values, approach l. Similarly, we have a right-sided limit. The limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to l says that as x approaches a from values that are greater than a, the f of x values, the y values, approach l. And combining the left and right limits, we have a two-sided limit. The limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l means that the left limit is equal to the right limit, and they're both equal to l. So here, as x approaches a from both sides, the y values, the f of x values, approach l. Now let's take a look at an example. Here's the graph we're going to be using. And here we're asked to find the limit of f of x as x goes to zero. Now, the first thing I notice here is that there's no plus or minus. It means that we have a two-sided limit. So we're asked to find what the y values approach as the x values approach zero from both the left and the right. So here's x equals zero. As the x values approach zero from the left, their corresponding y values approach two. As x approaches zero from the right, the corresponding y values also approach two. So this limit is equal to two. Here we have the limit as x goes to zero from the left of f of x is equal to two and the limit as x goes to zero from the right of f of x is equal to two. Here we're asked just to evaluate f of zero. This is saying what is the y value associated with x equals zero for this function? When x is equal to zero, we have this point here, y is equal to two. This is saying f of zero is equal to two. In this case, the limit and the function evaluation are the same, but that's not always the case, as we'll see in the next example. Now we're asked for the limit of f of x as x goes to negative five. And again, it's a two-sided limit. As x approaches negative five from the left, the corresponding y values approach three. As x approaches negative five from the right, the corresponding y values also approach three. So this limit is equal to three. And notice, the limit is just asking for the behavior of the y values as x is approaching negative five. It's not asking what happens at x equals negative five. It's only saying what happens as x approaches negative five. So as x approaches negative five from both the left and the right sides, we're getting the y values approaching three. So it doesn't matter if this is an open circle on the graph or if it's a point on the graph. The limit is not asking about that point. So this limit is equal to three. Now it's a different question here to say, what is f of negative five? Now we're looking for the y value associated with x equals negative five for this function. And that is given by this point here and so f of negative five is equal to one.
So again, notice the difference between the limit behavior and the function evaluation. They are very different questions that were being asked here. Now we have the limit of f of x as x goes to negative 3. Again, a two-sided limit. As x goes to negative 3 from the left, the corresponding function values approach positive infinity. As x goes to negative 3 from the right, the corresponding function values approach positive infinity. So from both sides, the function values are approaching positive infinity. So we're going to write positive infinity here, but we have to note this limit does not exist as a real number. But instead of writing DNE for does not exist, writing positive infinity gives more information. So we're going to write down positive infinity here for this limit, but we understand that really the limit does not exist as a real number. Let's take a look at another here. Here we have the limit of f of x as x goes to 2. Again, it's asking for a two-sided limit here. But as x goes to 2, look what's happening. As x goes to 2 from the left, the function values are approaching 1. Limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x is equal to 1. But as x goes to 2 from the right, those function values are approaching negative 2. So the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x is equal to negative 2. Our left limit does not equal our right limit, so that says our two-sided limit does not exist. So this limit, we're going to say DNE for does not exist because the limit as x goes to 2 from the left does not equal the limit as x goes to 2 from the right. Now let's take a look at what we have here. The limit as x goes towards negative infinity of f of x. As x goes towards negative infinity, we're talking about out here. This is x going towards negative infinity. What's happening to the corresponding y values? They're approaching 0. And as x goes to positive infinity, what's happening to the f of x values? As x goes towards positive infinity, the corresponding function values are going towards negative infinity. So again, this limit does not exist as a real number, but writing negative infinity gives more information than writing DNA. So just for completion, I write this out again here. Although these limits do not exist as real numbers, we say the limit of f of x as x goes to a is equal to infinity when the values of f of x increase without bound as x approaches a. And this can also be a one-sided limit. We can also talk about limits being infinite from the left or from the right. So again, this is the case that we had here as x is approaching negative 3. As x is approaching negative 3 from both sides, our function values increase without bound. They go off to positive infinity. And we say the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to negative infinity when the values of f of x decrease without bound as x approaches a. And again, this can also be a one-sided limit. So we need to recognize that these limits do not exist as real numbers. But we write infinity or negative infinity because it gives us more information than just saying does not exist. Let's take a look at another example. Sketch the graph of f of x and use it to determine the values for a 
for which the limit exists. And this is the limit as x goes to a of f of x. So we're asked to graph this piecewise function and determine for which values of a this limit exists. And note, when we're saying that this limit exists, we're saying the limit is the same from both sides, the left and the right, and it's a real number. It's not infinite. So please take a few minutes and sketch the graph of this piecewise function. Please pause the video and work on that. So for x values that are strictly less than negative 1, we want to graph the line 2 minus x. That's here. If we had continued this line, it would go through a y-intercept of 2, and it does have a slope of negative 1. So this is the line 2 minus x, but we only want it for x values strictly less than negative 1. So we have an open circle here where x would equal negative 1, and we're continuing the line to the left. We want the line y equals x for x values that are greater than or equal to negative 1, but strictly less than positive 1. So we've got the line y equals x here. We're including the point negative 1, negative 1, and not including the point 1, 1. And then for x values greater than or equal to 1, we want the parabola x minus 1 squared. And we learned in the last lesson that this is going to be our basic parabola shifted to the right one unit. So our basic parabola starts with a vertex at the origin. We shift it to the right one unit. And then we notice we only want this graph for x values greater than or equal to 1. So we only want this half of the parabola. So now we have the graph of this piecewise function, and we're asked to find the values of a for which the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists. Now, by looking at the graph, it's much easier to pick out the points at which the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist wherever we have these jumps in the graph. So as x approaches negative 1, from the left, we have a limit of 3. From the right, we have a limit of negative 1. So for a equals negative 1, this limit does not exist. We also see that as x approaches 1, we have a different left and right limit. The limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x is equal to 1. The limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x is equal to 0. That tells us the two-sided limit, the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x, does not exist. So we can see that the limit does not exist for a equals negative 1 and for a equals 1. Well, let's remove those two values from the domain of this function, and then we'll have the set of values for a for which the limit exists. So for a in negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to 1, union 1 to infinity, all open intervals, the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists. Let's take a look at another example. Sketch a function f of x satisfying these qualities. We want the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x to be equal to 1. Limit as x goes to 0 from the right f of x to be equal to negative 1. We want f of 0 undefined. We want f of 2 equal to 1. And the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f is equal to 0. Limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f is equal to 1. So as we go through the conditions here, we realize that whatever we draw might need to be changed. So it's always good to do this with a pencil or a digital pen that can be erased. So we'll start here, and we'll see how it goes. Limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x is equal to 1. So as x goes to 0 from the left, we want our function values 
to go to 1. So we might have something like that. So we've got that condition. Let's see what we have here. The limit as x goes to 0 from the right of f of x is equal to negative 1. So as x goes to 0 from the right, the function values are going to go towards negative 1. Now it's not specified if it needs to come from up here or down here, so I'll just draw something in like that and we'll see how that goes. We want f of 0 undefined. Okay, well I have two open circles here and I don't have the point defined anywhere, so so far that's okay. Limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x is equal to 0. As x goes to 2 from the left, the function values go to 0. All right, there we go. As x goes to 2 from the right, the function values go to 1. As x goes to 2 from the right, the function values approach 1. So maybe it looks like that. And f of 2 is equal to 1 f of 2 is equal to 1. That means I should close in this circle. Okay. Let's just check again to make sure we have a function that satisfies everything we're asked for. Limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x is equal to 1. As x goes to 0 from the left, the function values approach 1. We've got that. As x goes to 0 from the right, the function values approach negative 1. We've got that. f of 0 is undefined. We have that. We could make that a little more obvious by making these circles look more open. There we go. Limit as x goes to 2 from the left of f of x is equal to 0. As x goes to 2 from the left, the function values go to 0. As x goes to 2 from the right, the function values go to 1. We've got that, and f of 2 is equal to 1. Okay, there we go. This is one such function that satisfies these conditions. And so we've answered the question. Now let's take a look at finding limits numerically. For something like limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x, we might consider finding this limit numerically, and by that I mean taking some x values that approach 0 from both the left and the right and plugging them in to the function here. So for x equals negative 0.1, sine x over x is going to be 0 0.9983342 approximately. Plugging in x equals negative 0 0.01, we're getting this y value. Negative 0 0.001, we're getting 0.9999998. And so notice these x values are approaching 0 from the left. And what are these y values approaching? these y values are approaching 1. Similarly, we're taking x values approaching 0 from the right. And their corresponding y values are also going towards 1 as x goes towards 0. So this limit is equal to 1. Again, because we have the left limit equal to the right limit, and they're both equal to 1. Let's take a look at another example. Limit as x goes to 2, x squared minus 2x over x squared minus 4. Now we're talking about x values going to 2. Here are some x values that are getting closer and closer to 2 from the left. And let's take a look at the y values. The y values are approaching 1 half. Here we have x values approaching 2 from the right. And the y values are also approaching 1 half. 
So this limit is equal to 1 half. Let's take a look at another. The limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x. Here we have x values approaching 0 from the left. And the y values are approaching negative infinity. Here we have x values approaching 0 from the right. And the y values are approaching positive infinity. So notice we have a different left limit than we do a right limit. Here we have limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x is equal to positive infinity. These values are increasing without bound, so we write that limit as positive infinity. But here, our values for 1 over x are decreasing without bound, so we have limit as x goes to 0 from the left of 1 over x is equal to negative infinity. That says that this limit does not exist. And let's take a look at this graphically. We talked about this function y equals 1 over x in the last video, so you should be familiar with that graph. That's here. As x goes to 0 from the left, the y values are going to negative infinity. As x goes to 0 from the right, the y values are going to positive infinity. And so the two-sided limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x does not exist. Now this gives us great insight though into this idea of dividing by 0. Because that's what we're talking about here when we talk about this limit. As x goes to 0, we're looking at 1 over x. So whenever we come across calculations where it looks like we might be dividing by 0, really what's happening is that we have limits going on and that the behavior is going to be infinite as long as we have non-zero over zero. So I want to be specific about this. Whenever you see a non-zero over zero, you should be thinking about positive or negative infinity. You should be thinking about infinite behavior because this is the kind of thing that's going on. But just keep in mind that if you see zero over zero, this is an indeterminate form and it means that we need more information. So don't automatically assume this is going to be infinite. That's not always true. But definitely when you see non-zero over zero, you should be thinking about infinite behavior. This is going to be a limit that's going to be positive or negative infinity from either side. And we'll see more about that in the next couple of lessons and certainly throughout the rest of the calculus series. So in this lesson, we've introduced limits graphically and numerically. And in lesson four, we learned to take limits algebraically as well. And this concludes lesson three, an introduction to limits.